This video is a Thor aggression deck, specifically the hand-to-hand -hand fighting and combat deck. What you'll see throughout this is that it has a high damage output, it's a lot of fun to play, and there is a lot of card drawing. This is a fairly traditional Thor deck in my opinion. Typically when I make these videos, I try to focus on aspects that are not part of the pre-constructed decks that are sold. Uh, in this case, I think that it's warranted to show this Thor deck idea. It's very effective and very fun to play. Here is the deck build. First, take all of the Thor hero cards and place them into the deck. Next, basic resources, one copy of Energy, Genius, and Strength. For this deck, since everything is fairly low cost, we are going to forego adding the power of aggression. It's fairly rare that I don't add the basic aspect resources into a deck. I think in this case, we really don't need them and we can focus on a couple other cards. We're going to put Thor's Axe into the deck. We're gonna have one copy of the Avengers Mansion, Helicarrier and Quinn Carrier. Our survival cards, one copy of Downtime and Endurance. We're gonna have one copy of the Hall of Heroes. One copy of Combat Training, one copy of Mockingbird. Three copies of Mean Swing, three copies of Battle Fury, three copies of Skilled Strike, two copies of Counterattack, one copy of Hulk, and one copy of Tigra. We're going to talk really quick about your mulligan or opening hand cards that you should be looking for. The first one that I recommend is having Asgard in your opening hand or trying to get it by using your mulligan action. Uh, next off, something that really helps this deck is God of Thunder. Now, there are two copies of God of Thunder in the deck, so getting one of those in your opening hand is excellent. If you don't get either Asgard or the God of Thunder, if you get four Asgard in your opening hand, that's fantastic as well. You can go through your deck and look for any uh, card with the Asgard trait on it. So you can u literally use four Asgard to get Asgard out of your deck. The reason why you want this, it increases your hand size. So Thor has a little bit of a restrictive hand size, so it's imperative that you get these cards out as soon as possible. Next up, we need to focus on resource management and generation. Helicarrier is obviously a good pick, and Quinn Carrier is also a great pick. Thor is thankfully an Avenger, so this card works very well with him also. The core mechanic around this deck, which makes it successful, is card drawing and then attack actions. So specifically, we're going to be using Thor's attack in conjunction with a host of weapons and other cards to increase his attack temporarily or long term to deal devastating damage. In addition to this, we want to start building up our resources on the side. We're going to be engaging a lot of enemies and then finishing them off with lightning strike. So if you haven't ever done this before, it's a really cool set of combos that you can perform. It's pretty easy to do. And once you get it going, it does a lot of damage and you can control a lot of the minions on the table very effectively. Card drawing is the core concept of this deck in addition to damage dealing. To get this to work effectively, just understand that Thor's special ability, Have At Thee, can trigger once per phase. So you're gonna have a couple phases in which this can trigger. The first, you have the player phase and then you have the villain phase. So Have At Thee can trigger during both of these phases. So during the player phase, we can artificially engage enemies by using the Defender of the Nine Realms card. This is a zero cost event, and what this allows you to do is to start discarding cards from the encounter deck until you reach and find a minion. Then the minion engages with Thor and triggers this effect. Now once this is done, it will swap over to the villain phase, and you can do this again. So if you draw your encounter card during the villain phase, it will actually trigger again. So you can have a total of four additional cards coming at you per round, which is a great resource for Thor to use. As I said before, his hand size is a little bit diminished, so once you get Asgard out and get something like the Avengers Mansion out, your ability to draw cards is going to increase dramatically. A discussion of why Get Over Here is not included in the deck I think is warranted. A lot of players feel that Get Over Here is a great way to artificially engage enemies as well. Now the thing about Get Over Here, it works really well in multiplayer games. 
But in single player games, you're already engaged with the enemy, so you don't have as many options to engage uh, those enemies. Now, obviously, if you're playing a three or four player game, Thor can peel those minions off of other players, and your ability to use his skill increases dramatically. So, you know, if you want to kind of swap out some of the counterattack cards with two copies of Get Over Here, you can do that. So if you're playing a three or four player game, it's a lot better. Um, in my opinion, though, I really like the card Counterattack. This is a card that can be found in the Black Widow expansion, and this allows Thor to fight back. So as just a one-cost upgrade that you can place onto the table, this is a preparation card, and it sits out. So once it's in play, you can trigger it at any time. But it's a great hero response. So if you're fighting the villain and you get hit for five, six, seven points of damage, you can throw Counterattack away to return that damage back to the enemy. So it's a really fantastic way, especially if you're playing a solo player deck, to really hit the enemy hard. If you're hitting them for five or six points of damage, or even seven, in a single player game, that's pretty massive. So that's a higher percentage of their overall hit points. Now, as you start adding in additional players, that's going to be diminished. So think of it this way, if you wanna swap out a couple of these cards. So I think Counterattack works very well with less number of players. Get Over Here seems to work better with more numbers of players. So if you want, here's a different sort of variant you can use to make the deck more effective. The next topic is survivability. Thor is fantastic. He starts with 14 hit points, which is basically on the higher end. You're not going to see many heroes that have that many. To further improve his survivability, you can put out his helmet in conjunction with Endurance. That's going to add plus 8 hit points to Thor, bringing his total to 22. Now, when you have 22 hit points, it's going to take you a long time to start healing up. So having that extra number of hit points, I recommend throwing one copy of Downtime into the deck. It's going to add plus two to Thor's recovery while he's in alter ego form. And that's going to make his recovery a plus six. So he's gonna get six hit points back per rest action. And that's fantastic. So having 22 hit points overall and six recovery is a great way to stay in the game and to stay in the fight. Let's get into damage dealing for a second. What you're going to be doing is focusing on weapon damage and using Thor's attack value to inflict massive damage on the enemies. You're not going to have a lot of attack cards per se, attack action cards in this deck, but you're going to be specifically attacking with these weapons. So understand that having out his hammer and his axe is definitely key and essential to making this deck work. There are some cards that trigger specifically off of a use of a weapon, so exhausting a weapon and whatnot will increase your damage output significantly, and we're going to dive right into that. Getting Thor's basic damage increased is a key to playing this deck. So one copy of Combat Training is going to increase his overall attack rating by one. In conjunction, having his hammer out will be two. So he'll be fighting at a plus two. He'll be hitting for four points of damage when he does just his normal attack, which is fantastic. In conjunction with that, we're gonna throw in the uh, Axe card as well. And this is going to allow us to add just a little bit extra damage uh, on occasion by spending a physical resource. So by just putting these basic cards together, having a four attack just normally, that's fantastic. We're also going to focus on uh, readying Thor one extra time, uh, you know, fairly often to get him to attack multiple times, and you're gonna see that a lot of this damage is just gonna start piling up. Quinn Carrier is one of those cards. The longer I play with it, the more I love it. Um, in this case, you can use the Quinn Carrier to generate a wild resource, and you're gonna use that to consistently power the Battle Axe, which simply needs a physical resource to deal two damage to an enemy during an attack. So think of it this way, every single turn you have that physical resource you need to activate the axe. That's a great combo, that's a great way to play. Essentially every turn you can increase your damage output by two and it's indefinite. Once you have these two cards out in play, they stay in play and you can keep activating it over and over again. This is a really great combo, highly recommend Quinn Carrier. Put it in any deck that you have an Avenger hero. 
As you've seen previously, Thor will have a lot of hit points. By using Battle Fury, you can wound Thor by simply just hitting him for one point of damage, but it allows Thor to ready, and then you can attack again. So the only caveat on this is that he has to kill a minion, which is fine because you're going to be engaging minions by using Defenders of the Nine Realms or other cards in this deck, um, or just enemies are going to be engaging you. So in general, this is okay. He's going to have a lot of hit points, so hitting him for one point and giving him another ready action is fine. Now remember, just by having his basic weapons out, his attack is going to be at a four. So we're going to buff that up and put it into the six, seven, eight, nine range. And it's pretty fast, it's pretty effective, and I'll show you how to do that. I really like these next two cards, and it really increases Thor's damage output. There is a card that comes from the Doctor Strange set. It's called Skilled Strike. For a zero cost event, you can add plus two to a basic attack. So if Thor has his weapons out, you're going to be fighting at a, at a four. This is going to raise it to a six, and it's really easy to do. It doesn't cost you anything, which is fantastic. In conjunction with that, we can have his ax and his hammer out, and we can use this other card called Mean Swing, and this is from the Thor expansion itself. And what this allows you to do is exhaust a weapon and add an additional three attack for that basic attack. Now what you're going to see is that since you have three copies of each of these in the deck and they don't cost anything to play, a lot of times you'll have them both in your hands. So think of it this way, you have a four attack normally, we're going to buff it up to a six. Now I'm going to exhaust one of the weapons and do mean swing and that's going to put me in the nine range. And that's fantastic, it hasn't cost any resources to hit for nine points of damage. In conjunction with that, when we're done uh, destroying something, and it could be potentially a minion or whatnot, we could then use the Battle Fury card, hit Thor for a point of damage, we could ready Thor again, and we can attack one more time. Now, this might seem a little bit um, sort of complicated and clunky, but it really isn't. Once you start having a lot of resources out on the table, you've got your Quinn Carrier, you have your Hella Carrier, you have your two copies of God of Thunder, which provide you those energy resources, you're going to be able to um, have enough resources after spending these cards, which cost nothing, to do things like hammer throw and lightning strike. And that's when a lot of this stuff starts building and piling on together. And you get these really crazy turns where you're drawing a lot of cards, you're killing a lot of enemies, and you're doing a ridiculous amount of damage. So we'll show you how that works. Lightning Strike is a sort of area of effect attack card in which Thor can wipe out multiple things that are engaged with him, so multiple minions, and you can do damage to the villain at the same time. So the key to getting this to work, and to work effectively, uh, is to use God of Thunder, and there are two copies of God of Thunder in the deck. In conjunction with that, Quinn Carrier can generate a wild resource. So if you have the Quinn Carrier out and two copies of God of Thunder out, that allows you to pump three energy consistently into this lightning strike attack. Now what that's going to do is that every minion and the villain will suffer a minimum of three points of damage every time you play lightning strike. Now if you have additional cards in your deck, which some of them have the energy resource, you can pump that even further. Now if you have a lot of cards in your hand and you have you know extra ones that you can spend for this resource, when this effect goes off, you can wipe out a lot of stuff on the board. In conjunction with that, if you have a copy of the Battle Fury card in play, since the Lightning Strike is a hero attack, specifically a hero attack action, you wipe out a minion, and you can wipe out numerous minions at the same time. Um, if Thor is exhausted, you can get rid of Battle Fury to ready Thor again, and you can use him to attack. So there's a lot of ways to wipe out minions, especially using this mass area effect uh, attack, and it allows Thor to then ready himself, and then he can attack again with his weapons, and also use the mean swing and the skilled strike. So you can have a lot of these turns, which just turns into this ridiculous amount of damage output in which you're hurting the villain, in conjunction you're wiping out a ton of minions all at the same time. 
Now, when you start wiping out minions, it gives you something else to do, which deals with card drawing, and I'll go into that right now. So we've already talked about wiping out a lot of minions, and you can actually increase your card drawing even further. There's a card in this deck called the Hall of Heroes, and if you ever ever played with this card, it works really well with Thor, especially when he's wiping out mass quantities of enemies using that lightning attack that we just talked about. So the thing that you need to focus on is that um, after you defeat a minion, place a glory counter here. Let's say you're engaged with two or three minions and you wipe them out using that lightning attack, which is really fun. You get to put one token on for each minion that is killed. Now as an alter ego action, you can get rid of those three counters and draw three cards. We're gonna make this damage output even better by talking really quickly about Hammer Throw and Hulk. So first off, Hammer Throw, it's a kind of a pricey event, but it has overkill. So you can use this to further destroy minions, and we all know that killing off minions in this deck is fantastic. So we can build up more tokens on the Hall of Heroes, and we can then also trigger our Battle Fury by wiping out a minion. The other thing that's great about this card is that the attack gains overkill. So you can slaughter a minion and then any excess damage goes through and hits the villain. So you can use these cards to whittle away at the villain. And there are three copies of Hammer Throw in the Thor hero deck. In conjunction with that, we also have Hulk. And Hulk has a somewhat of a strange ability. When he attacks and an energy card is drawn, it damages each character, and that's each character on the table. So that's going to be minions, villains, that's also going to be the heroes and allies. Now, that might sound a little bit counterintuitive. Why do you want to do that? Well, it allows um, those minions to get even weaker and weaker. So using Hulk in conjunction with the lightning attack that we talked about previously, the lightning strike card, it allows you to weaken the enemies using Hulk, and then in conjunction with that, when you do attack them with Lightning Strike, you're gonna need less of those energy resources to wipe out those minions. So use all of these things together in conjunction with one another, and focus on killing minions and engaging those minions. I'm gonna add a quick comment on Hammer Throw and specifically getting a little bit of extra resource generation. There's a subtle combo that you can do with the hammer throw. So when you do hammer throw, it's going to exhaust the hammer and then it's going to go back into your hand. And what's interesting about this is that I see a lot of players when it goes back into their hand, they just simply play the hammer out immediately. There's something that you can do with it that's a little bit more subtle. So since the hammer goes back to your hand, you can spend it as a resource and it can go back into your discard pile. Now your alter ego form is going to allow you to jump into your discard pile and pull the hammer back. So if you ever have any of those turns where maybe you just need one extra resource or you wanna bring something out, maybe you need a, a couple of them, I, I don't know. But this gives you the ability to use your hammer as a resource and just remember that the alter ego form, you can cycle it back into your hand for a free action when you're in your alter ego form. So think about that. It's just a good way to get a little bit of an extra push if you need some resources. To sum it up, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and you've learned some tips and tricks on how to use Thor a little bit more effectively. A lot of this stuff is a, a little bit sort of complicated. It feels a little bit hidden. The first several times I played the Thor deck, it seemed a little bit strange to me. I had a hard time sort of dealing with the mechanics, but once you figure it out, it can be very, very effective. Um, obviously, Thor seems to really shine when it comes to aggression and engaging enemies. So that's almost kind of what he's built to do. Some of the other aspects, I think, are not as strong when you're playing Thor. That's why I kind of built this video. Typically when I make these videos, I try to give you an aspect that has nothing to do with the pre-constructed deck that comes with your hero. In this case, I think aggression is the best choice for Thor. And I think it mentioned just talking through this and how some of these mechanics actually work. So it helps you understand, hey, you can really do a lot of fun and effective stuff by using Thor. 
and it kind of offsets the sort of hand size limitation that he has by all of the card drawing. So hopefully you understand that you can counteract that and really make this deck shine. So I want to thank you again for joining me, and as always, have fun gaming.